Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and I am here today with another Mock Mondays video. As you remember from last week, I was working on my modular scale space restaurant called Astro Bistro, and today we'll be looking at the update for this week. There has actually been some significant updating to this, uh, mainly I'm just working a little bit at a time, trying to get things to work and uh, also color it well. I actually had two BrickLink orders that came in recently that were very helpful for the construction of it so far and continued construction of this building. Looking from the front, you can see that there is now a front entrance. There is also an, a complete sidewalk, which last time there was only partially made. Some of the sidewalk has jumper plates in it so that you can fit minifigures doing different things at different points. Even have Big B bricks here. He's holding some of the signs I'll use later in the building. Order here and a cheeseburger. Perhaps it'll be used on a menu. He easily can come off. That always happens, so don't worry about that. We also have a few other things in the front. We have some space minifigures on the sides, kind of using some little welcoming uh, figures to the space restaurant. You may notice that two of them. Um, out of the two of them, only one of them is able to stand up correctly. And that's because one of them doesn't have the oxygen tank on the back of him. It's a little bit close to the building for right now, so that I could fit an astronaut with the oxygen tanks on the back of them. So I might have to modify that. Uh, I use jumpers to fit them in that spot, but perhaps I'll change it to plates and tiles so that it'll fit a lot easier for most astronauts like this. Also on the front, you can see we have a small bike rack, so we could actually fit bikes there. I haven't actually tested if it works to fit the small Lego bicycles there, but I'm, I'm pretty confident in it. I'll maybe test it a little bit later. It's simply made out of a fence-type piece and then some modified uh, plates that are clips on the ground, so it looks very natural. On this side, you get to see a small sign next to our spaceman. And it says Space Police, much like the classic LEGO Space theme, Space Police. I think that was specifically Space Police 2, but anyways, that is a small sign, much like you see in other restaurants that are along sidewalks, they'll have small signs to say, you know, their specials of the day, the soups of the day, things like that. So I thought for my restaurant, I would have it that they would have a small uh, theme, uh, maybe a special space theme every once in a while that would be switched out. These are actually some 2x3 slopes with 33 degrees, and they are printed. I have a bunch of these from different space themes, so I'll switch them out every once in a while. Perhaps on the grand opening, I'll have the classic space logo used here instead. This is sitting on a small hinge piece, you can see right there, and it also has some jumpers underneath. So it looks like it's standing up properly. On this side, you can see a lot of our minifigs are fitting inside, so it has a good occupancy for so far. I will have to fill in a lot more of the area with different tables, chairs, the, the back counter, the cash register, a small fridge, and maybe even a kitchen if I'm lucky. I'm not really sure about the kitchen part yet. Um, I'll, I'll even try to fit in a back door so we can have a way to get back to the alley and maybe put out the trash in a small dumpster. But inside of here, we have a few things. If I just remove some of these figures, you can see we have a few sig figs involved. Big D, little A, we're carrying a chair. Um, we had Big B Bricks in the front, and Bricks for Chris is sitting here in his own little street side table. It actually fits minifigures pretty well because of the use of pieces. We have jumpers used here, a trans clear brick there and then a 2 by 3 plate there. So it's not too high and not too low for a minifig to fit there. You could actually have them, you know, eating something or drinking some coffee. The reason why I include Bricks for Chris and the Big B Bricks crew is because they were a big help in a lot of the bricks for this uh, update so far, and even continued updates as I add more bricks to the building. Um, bricks for Chris was actually a little bit more helpful with the, some of the windows on the sides, and even part of the mechanism in the middle. We'll see about that pretty soon. There's also a, a symmetri uh, symmetrical 
table side right there. Now for the mechanism in the middle. Uh, if anybody's seen it on Instagram, you already know what you're expecting, but you probably want to see more about it. So for those who haven't seen it yet, this is designed to be a sliding door. Uh, actually two sliding doors that move opposite directions to open and close with people coming in. Much like your grocery store or a lot of different stores, but I know as a coffee shop this may not happen, but since it's a space coffee shop, I wanted to make it a little bit more futuristic and technological. So simply, we just take this knob on the top, we turn it one way, and it opens up the door. Turn it the other way, and it closes. There's enough space in there to fit a minifigure, so you can theoretically show a minifigure walking into the building. Now, this whole mechanism is, uh, is made from a few different sources. I found it through a Lego Technic book. Um, I'll have to review that at some later point and show you specifically what me mechanism I used in there. As well as a Lego Star Wars set, the Separatist Shuttle. And thank you to Dave Frost for showing me the instructions and the actual model for that. It was very helpful for that function to work. So here's a look at it from the top of the mechanism. You can see a whole bunch of different gears. These two are actually turning the door, which underneath the doors have modified plates on top with uh, the gears, the gear teeth pieces. You might have even seen a Brickstar had a recent video with the Technic Control Center. The teeth of the dinosaur in that video, that's what I'm talking about that are underneath these gears. They turn the door back and forth. Now we have this, connects to this, connects to here. It will turn these both in one way, but these gears, because of where they're oriented, they will turn in opposite directions of each other. You can see how that works. Now in order to, for me to keep the doors in place, I actually have a few sliding pieces in the middle. Uh, I'll see if I can find them, because I have extras, and I could show you briefly what they look like. Here is the brick that is used for inside of the doors. We can take a look at it briefly from the back. If we get the right angle, you can see right there where the light blue, light bluish gray and the black kind of meet. This is the piece in black. It looks like this. And then you can see there's a light gray piece right next to it. That is the sliding piece. It's a lot like this one, but it's only one by two. So I don't know the technical names of them, but they are useful for these kinds of situations. I've previously used them in different models, and they're actually very helpful and very cool to see that they can slide. Without those types of pieces on the bottom, and thanks to Dave Frost for showing me that, without those types of pieces on the bottom, the doors would not be able to move back and forth successfully. They'd usually slant upwards and make a weird uh, dent in the doors. Not, not a physical dent that it actually damages the pieces, but it just makes the doors not stay straight. So thanks to those pieces, they can move horizontally just fine, actually. I really enjoy that. You can see how that works from the back. Now, a lot of people have already seen this on Instagram, and they are really excited. They want to see a tutorial for the sliding door. It's actually the smallest scale that you can actually make this door, with two doors actually. You could probably make it a little bit smaller if you just use one, but I'm willing to make a tutorial. Um, you'll have to see it at a later time, give me some time to actually break it down, see what I can show as far as the specific parts that you need, um, and then you'll get to see a tutorial of how to make a sliding door. It's probably the most minifigure scale accurate uh, sliding door that I can make. I'm actually glad that it fits in the space well, so I can still fit chairs around the sides. And I technically wanted to have both sides the same color, or at least instead of the black, I wanted to have uh, light bluish gray or light gray. But I couldn't find the right pieces for it, but I'm okay with this for now. So, you can hear that there's a couple of things coming up for the Astro Bistro. I will be trying to make more tables, chairs. Remember last time I talked about putting up a mosaic, perhaps on this wall. Um, I'll have to see what I have as far as parts and what time I have to devote to this before we get to see it next Monday. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to share some questions if you have any about this mock so far in the comments below. 
And I look forward to seeing you guys next time with more of the Mock Monday Astro Bistro.